Hello, I'm Chris Turner in the product support department. I'm just going to do a run through of upgrading the software on our current range of VHFs. This is the Ray 70, and this procedure will apply to the Ray 50, the Ray 52, the Ray 60, and like I said, the Ray 70. I also have connected a second station handset. If you have one of these handsets on the boat, you do need to upgrade the application on the handset as well to make sure these two talk and are compatible. So the upgrade process consists of upgrading the bootloader in the VHF and then secondly upgrading the application. And the application file con contains the software for the second station handset as well if you have one on board the vessel. So if we look at the menu on the VHF, so if we press the menu button and scroll down to setup, scroll right to the very bottom to maintenance and then about this unit. And then if I scroll down here, it says software version V1.24. And if I have a handset and it's powered on, it will say handset VH for version handset 1.04. So I will be upgrading the application from 1.24 to 1.35 and the handset from 104 to 106. Okay, and don't forget the bootloader file which we have to upgrade first. So let's come round to our multifunction display. So this is connected to the radio via a small CTORC NG backbone which has its own terminators, power, all the expected parts connected. So if I go to setup and maintenance, diagnostics and select device. So on here I can see my ES128 and my Ray70 VHF running application 1.24. Okay, so like I mentioned, you do need to upgrade the bootloader on the VHF before you upgrade the application. What I'd like to just demonstrate though is what happens if you try and upgrade the application first. So I've popped my application file into the unit. Now you may be wondering why I've got two micro SD cards. The reason for that is you can't have the bootloader file and the application file on the same card because the multifunction display doesn't like that. Okay, so you either have to have two separate cards or you have to load the bootloader on, load it into the radio, erase it and then copy the application file on and load it into the radio. All right, so I'm going to try and upgrade the application file first. I've had my pop-up saying software updates are available, I click yes and then you click OK on the disclaimer, click OK, and then the Ray 70 is ticked. Current 1.24, it's going to try and load in 1.35. However, I know it's going to fail because I haven't done the bootloader yet. So if I click Install Now in the bottom right, the radio will reboot, and it says Bootloader 209 on the radio screen. OK, and on the MFD, it has timed out and it says failed to start, one update failed. Okay, so that's expected behavior when you haven't upgraded a bootloader. Click OK, it comes out of the menu and the radio will just reboot and there's no harm done. Okay, so let's take that file, that card, back out of the multifunction display and I'll now show you the correct procedure for upgrading the radio. So we pop my bootloader file in. Now I won't get a software pop-up box, so I need to go into setup, maintenance, check card for updates. It will scan the network and then you click OK on the disclaimer and it will show my list of products. Okay. I need to click or tick the Ray 70 and it will say reinstall, that's fine, because it doesn't know the version of bootloader currently in the radio, and I click install now. The bootloader file is quite a small file, so this won't take too long. You've noticed the radio has 
rebooted, so it's showing the current bootloader version, 209, and that is being upgraded to 2.15. So there we go, update complete, click OK, and the radio is now in bootstrap mode. Now this looks like uh, a bit of a worrying situation, but it's perfectly normal. It just means that the bootloader has been loaded in correctly, and the next step is that it's waiting for the application to be loaded in. Okay. Right, so if I remove my bootloader card from the multifunction display, and I will insert my application card, and that should produce a pop-up box after a couple of seconds, saying software updates are available, click yes, click OK on the disclaimer, and it's already ticked my Ray 70 saying it's going to upgrade the application. Now just before we proceed, in this example where I have a second station handset connected, in order to upgrade the software on this I need to put it into programming mode. Obviously you ignore this, uh, this procedure if you don't have a handset on board the vessel, you just click on install now on the multifunction display and that will be upgraded. In order to put this into programming mode you have to power it off with the button on top so wait for the LCD to go blank. Very important you check the handset is powered off. Once it's powered down, you press and hold down the distress button, keep it held in. Press and hold down the push to talk button, keep it held in. And then press the power button on top once and the handset will boot up. Seeing that those buttons are held in, I can now release them and it will have a blank LCD and the backlight will just be flashing slowly on and off. So that's now in programming mode. So we have my radio ready to be programmed and my handset ready to be programmed. So we can move back over to the multifunction display. We're all ticked and ready to go and I can click install now. So like I said the application file contains the application code for both the radio and the handset if one is connected. It is very important that if a handset is on the vessel you do upgrade it as well otherwise upgrading just the radio will make the handset incompatible. The typical symptoms you will see is that the next time you or the customer powers on the handset it will just be a blank screen. It doesn't mean that uh, any damage has been done. All it means is that you need to reload in the application software into the radio and handset, but this time you need to have the handset in programming mode. And that means it will update the handset to the same compatible version of application as the radio, and they will both work together correctly. So, at the bottom of the uh, display on the multifunction uh, screen, you can see it gives an estimated time remaining. So it's saying approximately two or one minutes left. So it doesn't take too long for this application code to load in, but it is, uh, it is much longer than the boot code was. You'll notice now the handset backlight is flashing in a different sequence. This now indicates that the multifunction display is programming the handset and it's finished programming the radio. And once the handset is finished, the whole upgrade will be complete and the radio will, will reboot and you'll be able to see the current bootloader and current application in the menu. So usually it gets to about 90% and then it says upgrade complete. So there we are. Software upgrade completed successfully. Click OK. That takes us out of the menu. And 
then if I just power this off again, you can see bootloader version 2.15, so we're happy the bootloader went in. Power it on again. I know my handset has been programmed correctly because I haven't got a blank LCD, so they're talking and they're compatible. And just to double confirm that, if I go into menu, set up all the way down to maintenance and about this unit, and I can see software version 1.35, handset version VH 1.06. So my upgrade procedure has been successful.